I'm going to show you a fantastic game between Vladimir Fedoseyev and Magnus Carlsen in the third and fourth place playoff in the World Cup. So exciting that you stick around. You won't be disappointed. I should also mention that the, the final of the World Cup between um, Sega Karyakin and Yang Krzysztof Duda, where they played their first classical game as well yesterday. But it was really boring, so I'm not going to show you that one. We'll see what happens in that match later. But anyway, let's concentrate on this one. Fedosev with the white pieces. Now, there's not much at stake in this third and fourth place playoff, apart from a bit of, bit of extra prize money. Um, but you know, the both candidates' places have gone to Duda and Karyakin. So the players can kind of, well, play with a bit of a free hand. And we see that with Fedoseyev. He plays h4. This is currently quite trendy. If you remember, Sam Shanklin defeated Peter Svidler. Um, but in some ways, it's typical of Fedoseyev's style. He is often prepared to take great risks. And, well, this isn't a great risk, not yet anyway but it shows that he's in a very adventurous player. And Carlsen even said after the match, he said, excellent move, h4, there you are, high praise. And Carlsen playing a fianchetto, that's an indication <clears throat> that he too is up for a fight in this game. So we've transposed into a kind of King's Indian where White has played this move h4 at a very early stage. Now, if you remember, Shankland played here knight e2, and it transposed into a, a kind of Zamish variation. And I think that's um, a pretty good way for White to play, quite reliable. But Fedoseyev was provoked. He spent eight minutes over that move, which I think shows that he's kind of improvising anyway. d5. The thing is, when you've played the pawn to h4, it means that if you want to push this knight out of the way, that's not really advisable because the knight finds an excellent square on g4. This is the problem. So that's why black can get away with playing this. So bishop e2, and now h5, that emphasizes black's, well, sort of control over the g4 square if the pawn comes here. Uh, and of course, h5 um, blocks the h-pawn. So h5 I like very much, <clears throat> and it feels to me as though, um, well, already I think black has achieved quite a lot in this position. You know, obviously with d5, that means that, uh, you know, this diagonal opens for the bishop. So I think black is already fine. Bishop f4 played. Bishop g5 has been seen there before, and I think that might be a bit more reliable. But anyway, uh, knight f3. It's it's not so bad for, for white. Knight f3, and Carlsen exchanges, and g takes f3. So that's kind of interesting as well. I mean, obviously, bishop f3 is possible. Um, you know, maybe this, this pawn can be advanced later, maybe supporting e5 as well. well let's see. c6. So already um, black you know, starting to put pressure on the position. Maybe this queen can come out to one of these squares. Maybe you're going to take here. Queen d2, Carlsen exchanges on d5 and plays king h7. So that prevents bishop h6. So, you know, he's keen to preserve this wonderful dark squared bishop looking down the long diagonal. Now, white could just skip with the king to g2. Um, that doesn't look so bad for white there. But a4 from Fedoseyev after 10 minutes thought. So he's gaining ground on the queen side. But, well, as we're going to see, it also creates a few weaknesses as well. And Carlsen now takes the opportunity, while Fedoseyev was spending this time advancing the a-pawn, to lash out on the king side f5. Carlsen has spotted some weaknesses down the f-file and now things start to get very tasty. If this is taken, then definitely time for an exchange sack 
well, it's not even an exchange sack actually because this is hanging. Um, this starts to look very tasty for black. So rook a3 from Fedoseyev. Um, well, yeah, interesting. You know, maybe the rook can can help across here. Let's see. Knight e5. And now the bishop drops back. So this is kind of an interesting position. Um, white is ready just to recapture here. But Carlson comes up with a really interesting idea. He plays f4. So if the bishop moves, then, for example, bishop here, then you can see that that knight is completely secure on e5. So bishop takes pawn. So that opens up the f file. That's interesting. Bishop d7. So that bishop can't really retreat. It's not very good because this can just be taken. Well, that feels very nice for black already. There's a big question to answer here for, for white. Where's that king going? It's not completely secure on the king side. And otherwise, is it really going to hang around in the middle? Let's see. Knight d1. So you can see why the rook came to the third rank. It is protecting some squares here. But now Carlson sacks the exchange. This was what he was building up to over the last couple of moves. Really, ever since he played f5, I'm sure this was in his mind. So this is a way of securing control over that f4 square. So you can see these pawns are now fixed with the bishop controlling f4 with the queen. Knight e3, bishop f4. So Carlsen is beginning to take control over these squares, or he has taken control. This is a wonderful position for black. Very typical of Carlsen. We've seen him do this kind of thing on so many occasions. Um, a pawn sack, an exchange sack, getting this kind of positional control. It's all about achieving wonderful squares for your pieces. Rook c8. That's a nice move, hitting the open file. And what is white doing with that king? If you castle, then queen f6. There's pressure here. So rook c3, very understandable move, exchanging off the active rook. Carlson exchanges. And now switches his queen over to the queen side, attacking here, c4. Well, if queen c5, then the king will run, and that's not too bad for white. So here's a nice move from Carlson, b5. He said after the game that this, this move was kind of on the cards for, for a long time. He was had this in his mind for several moves. If... Pawn takes pawn on b5, queen c1 check, and the queen comes in, check, and bishop takes b5. And if bishop takes, then queen takes knight mate. So after b5, pawn takes pawn on b6 en passant. And here is a critical moment in the game where Fedoseyev misjudges the position. He brought the queen back. He should have just castled and given back the exchange. It's not an easy decision to make. You know, you've taken this exchange. You want to get something for it. Um, but here, um, I mean, at first glance, this still looks fantastic for black with control over these dark squares. In fact... This is playable for white. This this king can come out and the queen will join the struggle. And basically it's not easy for white for black, excuse me, to use these. You you can take a pawn back, but now black doesn't have the same control. Um and white should be okay there. So incredibly after castles, although optically it looks rather nice for black, in fact white is okay here. In any case, uh, Fedosev rejected that and played queen g1. But now things are really serious. The queen threatening to come into the position. King f1. 
Queen a2. The king can't come to g2 because the bishop is on. And now it is absolutely horrible. Check. Queen b2. Um, knight g2 played. I mean, maybe it would have been better to exchange off these knights. It's still very, very unpleasant because the king can't come to g2 because this this bishop would be taken. You can see these, these pieces just can't move. Um, I mean, one possibility here is for black's king to enter the position like this, to come all the way down the board. Um, that might actually force a decision. Yeah, that's, that could be the way to do it. Looks beautiful. Uh, in any case, knight g2 played. Check. Knight has to come back. Queen d2. So you can see these pieces are completely paralyzed. The king can't come to g2 because the bishop would be taken. Now, the question is, how does Carlson break through? And he finds a nice move. I mean, he um, he would have liked to have moved his, his king in to the position. Uh, but the problem is when he gets to a6, you've got to watch out for c5 check. So he plays e6. This is clever. And this just breaks things open. Um, if that's taken... Then the king does have a route into the position because it can go via c5 and the king comes all the way in um, and yeah basically it, it will it will reach d2 and then well basically um, white cracks at that moment. So after e6, what did white do? Well Fedosei have just waited. Pawn takes pawn, and this opens the position. So C takes, then the B5 pawn runs, or the B pawn runs. And in the game, E takes D5, and now the F5 square is available for the bishop. I mean, it's a comical position for white. These major pieces simply can't move. It's, it's absolutely beautiful, and Carlsen can just take his time here. Uh, knight D7, and that knight is coming around to C5. So, for example, if rook g1, if white just waits, then knight c5 comes into b3 and then d4, and then the bishop can be taken. So rook g5 played, that was taken, and now the knight, in this case, comes to e5. And queen c1, that was the final move of the game. Fedoseyev resigned. Why did he resign? Let's just have a quick look. White is still rather short of moves. Um, let's play this one. Knight d3 takes here. Queen g5 check. Well, we can chop things off and take there and everything's dropping. And after this, I guess if queen d4, it looks to me like... Oh, it's the win. Ah, oh, yeah, we can just play bishop h3. And after king g1, queen takes knight should do the job. So that's the final position. Carlson said afterwards, it's very rare that you get to play a game where your opponent can't move any pieces. That's that's true. He was on uh, very good form in his post-game interview. He looked kind of um, pleased to play a game like that after his loss against Duda. And actually, he was very uh, objective about his play against Duda. You know, he he said, my opening choice wasn't very good. And at the end, he said, I should have really held the game. He said, uh, somehow the pressure got to him. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend a view of that. I'll try, perhaps I'll try and post the link to that interview um, so you can see it. But he was on very good form. But also, as I said, very objective about his play against Duda. A lot of people in the comments say... What's Carlson doing? Terrible game. How could he fail to draw that? What a drip. Listen, everyone has a bad day at the office. But overall, Carlson is actually incredibly consistent. Uh, so a lot of people writing him off. 
Um, I find that extraordinary. He had one bad game. He can't always do it. The pressure at this level is enormous. Um, he played one bad rapid play game. Okay, listen, that's probably enough from me. Don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's try and hit 100k. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon. Check out the rewards you get by uh, donating via Patreon. Do check out the video on the channel. That's all from me.